Hello and welcome to this video today where we're going to be looking at the setup and the running of the NC4 Plus Blue. This will be a series of videos where we'll be looking at the procedures for the alignment, the calibration and some of the tool setting cycles. We're going to kick off today with alignment which is the first stage of the setup process. We have Ian with us today who has worked many years on the development of the NC system. Ian, what is alignment? So alignment is part of the setup procedure of the NC4. We is and that is split into two stages. First of all, we have the alignment cycle, and later on we have calibration. The purpose of the alignment cycle is to get the laser beam level or perpendicular with the z-axis, okay, and square with the x and the y-axis, okay. and also to set nominal positions for where the beam is in, in the working volume of the machine. Okay. Do we need any special tools for this? Yes, you need a calibration tool. And there are two main types. We have a rounded version and a flat-ended version. This is the traditional version we've had out for a long time. This is the latest one we recommend with the NC4. Okay, and where can the customers buy these tools? Well, they're available from us, from Renishaw, okay. um, but you can also buy them from your local tooling supplier. Okay, so when the system's first installed, I take it the installation engineer will align it, or the, or the machine OEM will align it. Is this something the customer will need to do as well? Um, alignment really only takes place generally at the point of installation. But you may need to align the beam if maybe you've removed it later on to maybe to get a large part on your table, or maybe you've knocked it. So it's not a frequent thing you have to do. It's generally always at the setup stage. Okay, so we have the calibration tool in the machine. Uh, we've got the tool setter in place. How do we go and tell the machine we need to align? Well, firstly, we have to create the alignment cycle and then enter the correct cycle inputs. So we're going to start with creating the cycle first of all. So all our cycles start with G65, okay? And um, they start with P9860, which is the cycle number. And then I'm going to use my Renishaw GoPro bat to help me with the cycle inputs because it makes life a lot easier. So first of all, um, I need to enter a D input, which is the span over which the test is going to take place. You've got to be careful here that you make the span not too big, otherwise you could hit the NC heads. So today we're going to use a span of 40 millimeters because we've got a smaller unit. But normally we would recommend 100 millimeters as the span distance. So in this case, we're going to set the span at 40 millimeters. So we'll enter D40. Uh, we need to tell the cycle the diameter of the calibration tool. In this case, it's 10 millimeters. So we need to enter that. And then finally, we need to enter the tool number where the calibration tool is located. In this case, it's T5. End of block insert. The tool is in the spindle and it's nice and clean. We're now going to use the hand wheel to position the tool centrally above the beam, approximately 10 millimeters. It's also very important to position the tool centrally between the two NC heads. And now we're ready to press cycle start. Okay, so the alignment cycle is now finished. We have two variables on the screen now. One is for the Z deviation yes. and one is for the XY deviation. Yes. What numbers are acceptable? Well, at Renishaw, we normally like to try and recommend, first of all, that you take the alignment cycle over 100 millimeters. That's an input to the cycle. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the difference between 0.1 and 0.2 to be less than 10 microns in Z. Okay. okay? In this example, the value is 0.112, so we're over, so this needs further adjustment. The situation in X and Y is slightly different. It's the same points we've hit here and here, but in this particular instance, the tolerance is less than one millimeter. Right. In this example today, we're down at minus 0.15, so that's perfectly within tolerance, so there's no need to do any more adjustment in X and Y. We only need to make a small adjustment in Z, so we'd open the door, carry on the adjustment routine, and then rerun the cycle again to try and bring that value down. 
What do we need to do then to get that within tolerance? Well, we have an NC4 app, which takes you through the alignment process uh, with an animation. So what we would do is we'd follow that animation through, make the necessary adjustments, rerun the cycle. Hopefully this value would come down in tolerance and then the whole procedure is complete. So we are, are we actually physically moving the tour setter then to get it yes. within tolerance? Yes, you're making some small adjustments to some screws to effectively level it up or push it down. And we keep repeating the cycle until it's within the tolerance again? Yeah, generally, the typical way of doing it is to make the adjustment, run the cycle. Make the adjustment, run the cycle. So you're bringing it down and down and down and down until you're happy with it. At that point, you stop. The alignment is now complete. The next stage of the setup process is calibration, which we'll cover in a future video. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe. Happy tool setting.